today's class we will start our topics by the basic understandings of the current the voltage the power energy and then we will learn some of the uh, basic terminologies that are used in linear circuit analysis and thereafter we will uh, move on uh, with the basic laws of electrical engineering so let us start our basic understanding of electrical current is based on the atomic structure so we do know that in an atom we have the negative charges in the form of electrons and positive charges in the form of protons that are inside the nucleus now these electrons are confined in the orbits which are some of the orbits are closer to the nucleus and some of them are far from the nucleus so those electrons which are far from the nucleus they have less force uh, exerted on them by the nucleus so they can easily be lodged out uh, from their respective orbits now an electrical current may be defined as the time rate of net motion of uh, charges uh, from uh, one point to another or through some cross section area so if i may say that we have some some conductor and we have some area in that particular conductor that we want to uh, that that can be used to elaborate the flow of current so flow of current is a flow of charges through that particular area and we uh, mathematically represent the current as i is equal to dq by now because we we know that this current i is the motion of charges and it is because of the negative charges in the form of electrons which constitutes the electrical current however way before the discovery of the atomic structures it has been decided that the current is a flow of charges from the positive terminal to the negative terminal and that is known as a conventional current so in a conventional current in a conventional current positive terminal gives the charges to the negative terminal so if we say that we have a given circuit with some some source here and we have some of the elements here so we say that the current is actually flowing from positive to the negative side although the electron current electrons move from the negative terminal to the positive terminal so this is by convention we always uh, nominate the flow of current from the positive side to the negative side so i is equal to dq by dt and since the charge on electron on a single electron the charge q is equal to 1.6021 into 10 to the power minus 19 so it follows that the one ampere of current means that there are 6.24 into 10 to the power 18 electrons that pass any cross section area in one second of time in electrical engineering we describe the current not only by the amplitude given in amperes but also by the direction itself so for instance we have an element here suppose we have any element it could be a resistance would be anything so the current and and we say that this is terminal a and this is terminal number b and we say that this one ampere is flowing through this particular element then the direction of the current is also very important by mean of the direction of the current we need to understand if the current is flowing from this terminal number a to b or it is flowing from terminal number b to terminal number a so this arrow sign is very much required when we describe the current in a double index notation we say that i of a of b is equal to one ampere which means that the current is flowing from terminal number a to b and it is ampli its amplitude is equal to one ampere this is conversely we can write it as that i b a is equal to minus of one ampere so minus one ampere means that the current is actually flowing from a to b but because we are describing this in terms of the flow from b to a we call it a minus one ampere we should notice one thing that current is a scalar quantity so that is a it is a scalar quantity now this scalar quantity means that there is no direction which is associated with the current and that is true because the uh, we will learn in the later classes that the laws that 
are used in electrical circuits like the Kirchhoff's current law, it do not obey the vector addition and subtraction rules. It is actually a scalar quantity, but this direction of the arrow which is used here, it is just to indicate that the current is flowing from A to B. It is not a, not a vector quantity. So this is all for the current. Let's move on to the to the next topic, which is the voltage. Voltage is the energy which is required to move one coulomb of charge through an element. Mathematically, voltage is equal to dW by dQ. So the amount of energy which is required to move one coulomb of charge through an element is known as the as the voltage. And voltage is that important quantity which is norm, which is responsible for the flow of electricity or the flow of current through a given wire. And likewise, for the for the electrical current, this voltage is also measured and attributed in terms of not only the amplitude but also the polarity direction is very important. So, for instance, if I say that I have some elements inside this particular black box. We have no information about the elements, but we do know that these two nodes A and B have a potential difference of 5 volt such that this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal. In terms of the double index notation, I can write as VAB is equal to 5 volt. This indicates that this terminal A is at a higher potential than this, this terminal B and the potential difference is equal to 5 volt. I can also write this as VBA is equal to minus 5 volts. So in terms of the uh, of the voltage and the current quantities, for the current, the direction of the current is important and for the voltage, the polarity marking is very important for, uh, for defining a voltage across any particular device. Now having said that, we have this voltage available here, which is equal to DW over DQ and the current which is equal to which is dq over dt. So let us say what is power. Power is actually a product of the voltage and the current. P is equal to V into I. V is equal to dw over dq times the current which is equal to dq over dt. So this cancel with this one. So mathematically power is equal to dw over dt. Likewise the, uh, the voltage and the current we need to define some convention to actually establish whether the power is being delivered by that particular element or it is receiving the electrical power. So for that we have a passive sign convention. Suppose we have, we have this particular element and that has again it has two terminals. We call it positive terminal and we call this a negative terminal. So if the current is entering the negative terminal and it goes all the way around uh, from all this element and it leaves back the positive terminal. This means that we say that this device has a negative power which means that it is actually supplying the power to the rest of the circuit. So negative power implies that a circuit element is losing some of its energy to supply the other elements of that particular circuit. So whenever we have the current leaving the positive terminal or the current, well, let me write it here as current entering the positive terminal or leaving the, sorry, current entering the positive terminal or leaving the negative terminal, if, if this happens, then power P is positive and it is called as power consumption or we say that this particular element is consuming the power. Contrary to that, if we have the current entering the negative terminal or leaving the positive terminal then the p is p is negative and it is called as power power generation or you can say it is supplying the power it is more imp uh, important to say that it is actually supplying the power so based on the terminal characteristics 
of any element of any nature even if you do not understand and you have no knowledge about the behavior of that particular element and how that element works still based on these two conventions you can tell safely that whether the element is actually consuming the power or it is actually supplying the power and similarly uh, just an addition here energy can also be calculated by integrating this power over time so energy is actually the integration of power over time energy is power integrated over over time so far we have discussed the concepts of the current and the voltage the power which is a product of the voltage in the current and the energy how can we compute uh, these using different expressions so thank you very much